Hey everyone, it's Matt Seuss here, and today I want to go through a quick walkthrough on the new updated Luminar 2018 for Windows. Now today is December 18th, and Skyloom has a new update for Luminar 2018. It's version 1.1.0, and it's an update for Mac and Windows users. Now the Mac version, most of the update on that is pretty much behind the scenes, so you know there's not a whole lot of visual to show you on that. So instead, I'm going to show you the Windows version here because there's a lot of new and enhancements to the Windows version that I'm sure a bunch of you have been waiting for. And I'll go through a walkthrough on all those so you're up to speed on what all these improvements are. Now, right out of the gate, one of the things that they did improve was the performance of it, and it, it works faster. It'll launch quicker. It'll launch now in full screen mode before it was launching in a small window that you had to maximize all the time. And there's supposed to be some faster editing performance and better RAM usage. And I've noticed an improvement in opening up my raw files from my Sony a7R. That's a 36 megapixel camera. And before the update, it was taking about 20 seconds to open that up inside a Luminar. And that's now dry down to 11 seconds. So that's a pretty good improvement in terms of performance right there and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be really excited about that. Another new update here that I'm sure a lot of people are going to be really excited about is the ability to now finally save a .lmnr file. So what exactly is a .lmnr file? Let's take a look here. I'm going to just go grab a preset and I'm actually going to go into my custom presets and I have some free presets here that are actually available for, from my website that you can download. And I'll go ahead and click on this preset right here. And let's see here, I'll go ahead and maybe make a couple adjustments to it as well. Uh, preset looks pretty good right off the bat, but maybe I'll just give it just a little bit more clarity and knock down the highlights just a little bit more. Okay, so I've made some adjustments here. If I go up under File and then click on Save, this is now going to allow me to save this as a .lmnr file. And we can see I've already done this already once I'll do it again here and I'll do red truck. We'll call this red truck and you can see that it has that extension right there. If I click on save this is going to save this file with all of the adjustments that I did here. I can now go ahead and close Luminar and I won't save it because I just saved it already and we can see here now that is saved in my Windows Explorer so it's saved on my hard drive. If I go ahead and launch Luminar again and then click on file and open and I'll navigate to that file, select it, and click on open, and this will bring it back into Luminar exactly where I left off before. And here we are with all those adjustments that I made. Now, a couple things to note, it does not save the history. So all the history that I did before, it's gone. It does save the history in the Mac version, but unfortunately right now it's not saving the history on the Windows version. You also don't have the option to include or not include the original file here. On the Mac version, you're able to do that. On the PC version, it's automatically including that file that you were working on. Another cool thing about these .lmnr files is that you can send it over to a Mac and open it up on a Mac as well. Now on the Mac version, when you're saving a .lmnr file, you have to, there's a new checkbox there that you have to select to make it Windows compatible. And what that's gonna do is it's going to strip the history on the Mac version. So you won't be able to save the history on the Mac version, but it then will be Windows compatible and you can then take that file and open it up on Windows. And it should go without saying that these files are proprietary, so the only program that will be able to open this up is Luminar 2018 on the Mac or on the PC. Another new option in here is the ability to save a LUT that you've, uh, that you've selected and save that inside of your preset. And let's go ahead and see what that is. We'll go back into uh, custom and we'll grab another one of my free presets that I have available here. Let's grab uh, the Vintage Americana and we'll choose that. And if I scroll down on the right hand side here, we'll notice that that was created using one of the default uh, LUTs that came with Luminar, the wooden LUT. Now if you had your own LUTs, you can also add these inside here and then save that as a preset and then that LUT will stay inside the preset. So that's a pretty cool new feature. Another huge improvement in the new Windows version is in the export to image area. Let's click on that and uh, this is probably one of the most important things for me 
because you can now change your color space. So Luminar used to just default to sRGB. Now you're able to change your color space. You can keep it at sRGB, switch it to Adobe RGB or Profoto RGB. So that's a huge, huge improvement in here. Let's take a look at what this actually looked like originally. So before we could save it as a TIFF, a JPEG or a PNG. We could apply some sharpening and we could resize the photo and that's it. Now for a TIFF, we can still add some sharpening, low, medium, high. We can resize it if we want to, change that color space. If you want to save it with a TIFF with compression, you can change change this to have it do LZW compression or pack bits. I prefer personally to keep it on none. And bit depth, you can now export this as a 16-bit TIFF. We weren't able to do that before. And you're able to change the resolution. Other formats that we have, we have standard JPEG and Again, we can change the color space on the JPEG, so that is new over there. And PNG, now here's some new things that we have, JPEG 2000, PDF, we can save it as a PDF, and a Photoshop document. You can choose to save it as a PSD. It's not gonna save any layers at all, but it will save it as a PSD file. And unfortunately, you don't have the option of saving it as a 16-bit PSD file. So if you need to export these at 16-bit, you're gonna have to choose TIFF. Now, Skyloom has said that there's better masking control as well, and it's related to some controls on layers for masking. So I'm just going to make a new adjustment layer here, and I'm just going to add a filter real fast. And let's just say we want to warm this up a little bit here. Now, under the masking option right over here, if I click on mask, and I'll just use the brush to keep this simple, up in top here, we can change the density and the feather of the entire layer. Now we were able to do that before on filters and we can see here on a screenshot that I did before I updated when I was using a mask on a particular filter, I was able to do that density and feather. I didn't check out beforehand before I upgraded to see if that was here before with the uh, on the layers, but I guess it wasn't. So this is what they were talking about when you have the feather and density controls. And so basically what that is, let me just turn my mask on here and I'll do a paint in and we'll see this. Let me go ahead and increase the opacity to 100 and I'll just give this a uh, sort of a harder edge here. And we'll go here and make a mask. So then up on top here now I can adjust the density, the overall density of that mask and also increase the feathering of it too, give it a softer edge. You also now have a new shortcut key inside of the masking. The X key will switch between paint and erase. So I'm gonna use the X key and go to erase and I'm just gonna erase this mask that I created. Okay, so I wanna show you another new option and that is you now have blend modes on each of the filters. And you just do that by to the right hand side of the filter name, there's a little drop down arrow that'll appear. Click on that and then go down to the blend mode and then you can change the blend mode and we can see how that changed my photo. After I did that, we can see now that that blend mode is down here. So now I can just go here and switch it again. Let's go ahead and take a look at one other feature that's now been added inside this new version, and it's under Tools. It's the Clone and Stamp tool. Now you'll use this to add or remove objects in your photo. And the way this works is that you first have to click to set your source. And so I can click over here and then this is where it's gonna basically paint from. If you didn't wanna have that spot chosen, hold on to the Alt key and then you're able to click and move that to another location. Once you've done that, if you go up on top here, you can adjust the softness of the brush and the opacity of it. And once you have those settings all set and, oh, and also the size, once you have those settings all set, you can then just click and drag your mouse around to paint in a duplicate of whatever you're cloning from. Now there are a couple quirks that I've noticed when using this. One is that I've already adjusted my softness and let's see here, if I go up on top here to adjust it, this is the only time that you see, see that center circle in the, in the middle getting bigger and smaller? That's giving you a visual representation of the softness that you've chosen for your brush. You only see that when you're adjusting that slider up on top there. You don't see it at all when you have the brush on your photo. On the Mac version, you actually can see it. It's a red circle inside there. So that's one quirk. 
Another thing is your keyboard shortcuts don't work to increase or decrease the size of the brush just yet. And when you need to zoom into a specific area on your photo, I've been having a little bit of trouble with that too. You can use your keyboard shortcuts, the control and plus or minus to zoom in and out. But the problem is now you can't hold on to the space bar to then drag and pan around the photo. So the only way I've been able to figure this out now is where your brush is. If you use the scroll on your mouse and put your brush in a specific area, then you can zoom in and out and actually move the photo around. So I'm sure Skyloom's going to fix this at some point soon so that we can actually pan around by holding onto the spacebar. You can do that on the Mac. There is no cancel button on the clone and stamp, so you do have to sort of commit and hit done. And if you don't like your adjustments, you have to undo it once it goes back into the regular Luminar interface. The Mac version doesn't have a cancel button either on this tool. And lastly, the up on top here, the edit and undo hasn't been working for me. And edit and undo on the Mac version does work. A couple other quirks that I've noticed too, a couple bugs in, in that is sometimes when I do bring it into the clone and stamp tool, that processing icon that you saw up in the very top there with the orange bar, that stayed on and I've had to quit out of the program. And I've also had that happen too when I've applied the adjustments as well every once in a while. So I don't know if it's just my computer or not. I only have one Windows computer to test this on. But I would recommend being just a little bit cautious using the clone and stamp tool and make sure you save a .lmnr file just before you use it, just in case anything bad happens and you have to force quit the program. Then you can just go ahead and open up that .lmnr file and get right back to where you were working on. Now when you are done using the clone and stamp tool, it will bring you back into the main window and you'll notice that it's been applied on an entirely new layer and you can turn that layer off and on. Now I'll tell you what, in recording this video, I did find another bug in this and that was I was applying this and my second headlight wasn't appearing. So the clone and stamp tool wasn't even adding that light. I had to quit out of the program and redo my steps and go back in and then the clone and stamp tool was actually applying it on this extra layer. So it looks like there's a couple bugs still inside the clone and stamp tool, at least on my computer, hopefully not on all of yours and I'm sure Skyloom will be addressing this real soon. Lastly, Skyloom has added support for a bunch more cameras, and let's take a look at that list here. So we have new cameras from Apple and Canon and Google, GoPro, Hasselblad, Leica, and uh, Light, Panasonic, and Sony, including those who have the new A7R 3 So now you have raw support inside of Luminar 2018. So I hope you enjoyed this quick preview of the new features that were in the update today from Skyloom. And let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, you know, certainly add those into the comments section below this video. If you're interested in my free presets, here is a link that you can download those from. And I'm now just finishing up recording my Mastering Aurora HDR 2018 online course. And that means I'm going to start my Mastering Luminar 2018 online course. So if you're interested in pre-ordering that, Get in touch with me, get me your email address, and I'll make sure you're on my list for that. That's it for now. I'll see you again soon.